Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth and we receive it this day, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you, you're bringing revelation of it. We are taking hold of it. We're putting it in operation, being doers of it. Thank you that it brings forth much fruit as we incorporate it into our lifestyle. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. Today we're going to share with you on the subject of the power of God and how to become full of the power of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is the power of God as well as the wisdom of God. And he wants you to have power. In fact, he wants you to become full of power. We see over in Acts chapter 6, Stephen, it speaks of in verse 8, Stephen, full of faith and power. He was full of faith and full of power. And he did great wonders and miracles among the people. God wants us to get full of faith and he wants us to get full of power so we can go forth and do the things that God wants us to do. When you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you receive him and you get the Spirit of Christ, which is, we saw, is Christ the power of God. But we also see, you must understand that you have a spirit of power. 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. He's given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. So you have a spirit of power, general spirit of power. But you have to do things that are going to cause you to see the power of God begin to work and get full of the power of God. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Now, the power of God is something that the Scripture says that you and I are to live by. In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, in verse 4, For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. That's speaking about Jesus. We also, we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God towards you. You are to live by the power of God. You have a spirit of power, and you are to walk in power. In fact, God wants you to get full of power. Now, Jesus had the anointing upon him. You and I have the anointing upon us. Because when we receive Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, you get the Spirit of Christ, which means the Anointed One. And then if you receive the Holy Spirit afterward, that's a further anointing from the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And look what it says about Acts 10, in Acts 10 about Jesus. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Notice the anointing of the Holy Spirit and power. God wants you to function in the power of God and become mighty and do the mighty works of the Lord. In the Old Testament, we see a scripture where it speaks even in the Old Testament era where they were full of the power of God. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. He says, But truly I am full of power, by the Spirit of the Lord, in judgment of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression to Israel as sin. Full of power to speak forth these things. God wants you full of power in everything that you do, so you accomplish the things that God purposes. Now, in the Old Testament, we see there was a tremendous manifestation of the power of God. In Exodus chapter 9, we see over in verse 16, in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. To show his power. God showed forth his power, of course. We see over in Exodus chapter 15, in verse 6, it speaks about his power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. The power of God will destroy the enemies dashing the enemies in pieces, as it says. Glorious power. And he wants that manifest in you and me now in the New Testament era through Jesus Christ. In Exodus chapter 32, we see what happened was the power of God went into operation. Verse 11, Moses besought the Lord his God, said, Lord, why dost thou wax 
wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. He brought them forth with great power. God wants you to know that the power of God is available to every single one of us. And he wants us to see the power of God manifest in every area. In fact, the power of God will bring forth everything in your life. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 8, over in verse 17, Thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. But God then says and corrects them, saying, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for he it is that giveth thee power to get wealth. Otherwise, it's God's power that he gives you, and it will even produce wealth. Establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to be blessed, as well as be healed, be delivered. He gives you the power for warfare. In Joshua chapter 14, over in verse 11. Here he's speaking, he's talking about Caleb speaking, he says, And yet, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. The word strength is the word koak in the Hebrew, which is the word referring to a manifested power, a manifested power. God wants to bring forth the manifestation of the power of God. And the power of God is for you to war, war, good warfare, to conquer the enemies, to overcome in all areas of your life. As you go forth, you're going to conquer all the enemies, and you're not going to do it in the flesh. You're not going to do it in the natural. You're going to do it in the spirit by the power of God. Here's when he was speaking here to Gideon about how he was going to go forth and deliver them from the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him in Judges 6.14, and he said, Go in this thy might... This is this word, koak, manifested power. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? They did everything by the power of God. Well, you and I are going to do things by the power of God in the New Testament as well. What are we going to need to do to get the power of God in our life experientially and to get ourselves to the place of being full of power to see God accomplish what he purposes in our life? Well, we see some scriptures, even the Old Testament first. In Judges chapter 16, that is, verse 17, it's speaking here about Samson. And notice what it says. This is when he told Delilah all his heart and said unto her, Thou hast not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength, or koak, my manifested power, will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Why did he have the power of God? Because he was a Nazarite. He was a Nazarite. The Nazarites were those who were devoted, consecrated, separated unto God. And remember, they could have no uncleanness. They could not touch anything that was unclean. They had to walk in holiness. They had no uncleanness on them whatsoever. And that's what's going to be necessary. If you're going to have the power of God, you're going to overcome sin, you're going to walk in holiness, you're not going to have anything that's unclean, and you are going to be one who's going to be devoted, consecrated, separated unto God to walk in the ways of the Lord. And he did that until he, of course, made the mistake. And, of course, it cost him. Over in Proverbs chapter 24, Proverbs 24, it tells us, how we're going to come to this place of having the power of God. Proverbs 24, verse 5. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge increases strength. This word means strong here, this first word. The second word, strength, is the word koak, which refers to a manifested power. Wisdom produces spiritual strength. Knowledge brings forth power to be manifested. So you need knowledge. You need the knowledge of God. The power of God is resident in God's Word. The knowledge of it revealed by the Holy Spirit will bring that power now manifest in you. And God wants you to get knowledge. The more you get knowledge, the more you're going to increase the power of God that is in you. Another thing you must realize is that you can operate in the power of God 
because of who you are in Christ now in the New Testament. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. What has God made you? You and I have been made kings and priests unto God. So as a king, you can speak to release the rule and the reign of God, the kingdom of God. And when you speak, it's going to bring forth power because you're going to speak the word of the kingdom. The word of the kingdom has power. You must understand, you are a king. You are to rule and reign. Remember Revelation 1.6. He said he's made his kings and priests unto God and his father. You're a king, you are to rule, you are to reign, and you are going to do it through the power of God that is going to be manifest as you begin to speak forth the things that God wants for you in your life. Another thing that we see is you must have absolute confidence in the Lord for Him to manifest the power of God in your life. We see in Isaiah chapter 40, over in verse 31, they that wait upon the Lord. The word wait upon, by the way, is a word which means to wait or have hope expectantly and eagerly, a confident expectancy. It's kind of like the word el peace in the New Testament, which means hope. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You're going to renew, and the word strength is koak, the word for power. You're going to renew your manifested power. You're going to mount up with wings as eagles. You shall run, not be weary. You shall walk and not faint, because you're going to operate in the power of God. The manifest power of God comes to those who are confident, expectant, waiting upon the Lord for Him to bring this into manifestation as you act upon the Word. You're going to, of course, be running the race, the running the way of His commandments, and walking the walk of the Word of God, doing all the things that He says. So, Certainly, your, the word in you and having hope, confidence, and trust in the Lord is going to be important if you are going to manifest the power of God in your life. Another thing we see, it's over in Nahum, chapter 2. He that dashes in pieces has come up before thy face. Keep munition, which means a stronghold. Watch the way, make thy loins strong, fortify thy power, this is the word koak, mightily. He wants you to fortify your power greatly, which means your power is to be strengthened. Well, this word fortify actually is a word which here it's in the peel stem. There's different stems in the Hebrew. And it means this like to strengthen or even to secure for yourself, to strengthen and secure for yourself the po manifest power of God mightily. God wants you to do what's necessary so that you have the power of God manifest in your life. Now, if you're going to see the power of God come forth, it's going to come through the Word coming into you. So you get the knowledge of God through the Word. Look what it says in Luke chapter 5, over in verse 17. This is when Jesus was ministering. It came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power, this is the word dunamis, which means power in the New Testament. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. So, what, why was that so? Because they heard the teaching. As the teaching goes forth, the Word of God, the power of God is in the Word. And God will confirm that Word, and He will perform that Word. He watches over His Word to perform it in our life. He will bring these things forth. So, the teaching of the Word releases the power of God, and the people had the opportunity to get healed. The power of the Lord was present to bring forth healing in their life. So, this tells us that you must be taught the Word. You must get the Word in you. And you must know the Scriptures. Not just that you heard it once, you need to know the Scriptures. They need to be in you. Look what it says in Matthew 22, down in verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. They didn't know the Word, and they didn't know the power of God. The power of God is in the Word, and as it manifests, you act on the Word, it brings the power of God into manifestation. These guys were in error because they didn't understand the Scriptures. Without knowing the Scriptures, you'll never know the power of God. Now, God, also, God wants you to know that He has given you 
authority, but he's also given you power because you have a spirit of power as well as authority to, to conquer all enemies in your life. Luke 9.1, he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power, dunamis, and authority, which is the word exousia in the Greek, over all devils and to cure diseases. You not only have authority, but you have power over them because authority and power gets released to conquer and cast out the demons and to bring forth healing. Power has to be manifest as well. So you have authority, you have power, and you are to put it in operation. You can cast out every devil, you can see every sickness, every disease be healed. And that's what God wants to accomplish. Another thing you must realize is the fact that you are going to do something to cause this power to be put on in your life. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Here's where they were told to wait for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit, that they were going to be receiving. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, that's where the Holy Spirit was poured out when they first got born again, and then they received the Holy Spirit. He said, wait, tarry there until you, it says, be endued, sounds like it already happened. But let me put the cursor over this word. This particular word means to sink into clothing, to put on or to clothe oneself. And when you look at this, for you here the first time, we bring a lot of important information up to tell you what's really being said. This happens to be a subjunctive mood verb, which means it's a conditional statement until you might be, the way you translate a conditional statement, that you might be endued or clothed upon with power from on high. But there's something more that we have to see here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's also in the middle voice. Now, if you're here for the first time, don't be overwhelmed by this, but this is important to understand. There are tenses, voices, and moods of verbs. The voices, there's three voices. There's an active voice. The subject is doing the action. There's a passive voice. The subject is being acted upon by somebody else. When it's the middle voice, which is what this is here, the subject is doing the action for his own benefit to see its effect in his own life. So that's what's happening here. So until you would clothe yourselves, do what's necessary, you clothe yourselves, if you might clothe yourselves, conditional, with power from on high, meaning it's conditional depending upon whether you do what needs to be done. And this is after the Holy Spirit would come upon them, as you will see. Because we go over to Acts chapter 1, verse 8, a highly misunderstood scripture. Many people read this scripture, Acts 1a, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. They assume that that means that well, the Holy Spirit came, so I have the power of God came. That's not what it's saying. The reason is, it didn't say you have received power. It said you shall receive power. Shall is future tense, which means this is going to follow after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So which comes first? The Holy Ghost comes upon you, which is receiving the Holy Spirit. What's to come second? Then you shall receive power. Now, Many people thought, thought the power came in at that point. If that's the case, then the word for power would have to be the word dekamai in the Greek, which means a ready reception of what came to you, a passive reception. But it's not. It is the word lombano. The word lombano in the Greek means to take hold of, to take or take hold of. So what it's saying is you shall take hold of power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, now you are to take hold of the power of God to be manifest in your life. And this comes through the Word and also through your faith, as you will see in a little bit. Now, it's important. You have the Holy Spirit within you. What's He going to do? He's going to bring revelation to you of the ways of the Lord. You see, if we all had the power, let's back up for a moment here. If we all had the power of God manifest in us tremendously, because of the Holy Spirit having come into us, we should all be dynamos. The power of God should just be functioning through us. Well, how come the power of God's not operating in very many people? Because they haven't understood there are things that you must do in order to see the power of God be manifest. This brings us to the next point. 
Ephesians chapter 6 is very important. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, it tells us some important things. You and I are to do what this, these scriptures say in order to see the power of God be put on in our life. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word strong is a form of the word endunamo, a form of the word dunamis in the Greek. It is the word endunamo. En is a prefix which means in. Dunamo means power. So this is talking about having power within, which is what produces spiritual strength in you. So he's saying, be empowered within, which produces spiritual strength within you. And this statement here that he makes, this is a command, because this is an imperative mood verb, which means it's a command. He's commanding you and me. So this is something that you and I must do. And I want you also to notice it is a present tense verb, which means this is have, to have an ongoing effect in your life. You are to continually be empowered within. You're commanded to be. Now, there's another thing you have to see here, though. It's the passive voice. The passive voice means somebody else is doing the action upon the subject. Well, the subject is you and me who are commanded to be empowered within. So that means somebody else is going to accomplish this work, and who is that? God is going to accomplish. But at the same time, if I'm commanded to do this, and yet God is going to accomplish it, is there something that I need to do? Yes, there is. So what this is saying so far is that you and I are commanded to be empowered within, the power of God resident within, in the Lord, God's going to do it, and it's supposed to have continuous operation, present tense. And also, it goes on and says, and in the power of his might. This is the word kratos, which refers to a manifested power, or a mighty power, a work of power, something that is manifested when you see the power of God go into operation. Of his might, and the word might refers to his mighty force. So this is talking about you being commanded to be inwardly empowered within, and manifesting the power of his mighty force out of you. It's supposed to be happening for every one of us. And yet God's doing it. So what's, we're, how, what is our part to play? The next verse tells us what to do. Put on. If you remember this word that we just saw just a moment ago about clothing yourself and duo, this is the same word. Clothing oneself. And we also, in discussing this, this is also a command. You are commanded to put on or clothe yourself. And the reason why, again, you're clothing yourself, remember the middle voice we just mentioned to you? This is also a middle voice verb, just like we saw. Meaning you are to clothe yourself. You do the action for your benefit. So, this is saying you and I are commanded to clothe ourselves with the whole armor of God, that you may be able, dunamai, have the power to stand against the wiles of the devil. As you are clothing yourself with the armor of God, that is God causing you to be inwardly empowered within and able to manifest the power of his mighty force to see these things come to pass. And why do you need to do this? Because you have spiritual warfare that you're going to be engaging again against the enemy, who is the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. The word powers here isn't dunamis, it's exousia. It really means authorities in the Greek. We're talking about evil authorities. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the evil spirits that are under Satan, that are operating. Wherefore, take unto you, this is the word analambano, Lombano means to take, ana means up, take it up for yourself. You're going to take this up unto you, the whole armor of God, that you may be able, you have that power, this is the word again, power, and this is subjunctive mood, which means it's all dependent upon you doing this. It's a, not an automatic thing. It's Subjunctive mood is a statement that is conditional statement. Based upon whether you carry it out is whether it gets accomplished. Conditional upon conditions being met. So you and I are to take unto us 
the whole armor of God that we may, may be able, might be, have the, be able, might have the power, if we do it, to withstand, that means to be able to set yourself against and resist in the evil day, which is the day when the devil shows up. And having done all to stand, you're going to be able to stand against the enemy's attacks. And then it begins to talk about how we do this. And this is putting all the parts of the armor, and every part of the armor involves the Word of God. So your, your loins girt about with the truth, that's the Word. The breastplate of righteousness, that's the Word of righteousness that's in your heart. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the gospel is the Word of God. It's going to direct your steps as you go. Taking the shield of faith, which is you speaking the Word. Remember, Jesus would speak the Word, it is written, that's the shield of faith you hold up which is what you're able, you have the power, again, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You're going to do this with the power of God. And take the helmet of salvation, it's your mind renewed to the truth, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the spoken word of God. This is the word for word, is the word rhema, which means a thing that is spoken. So it's referring to the spoken word. You're going to speak forth the word of God. So that means the word's going to be coming out of your mouth. And what are you going to do with all this? You're going to be praying always with all prayer and supplication. The Spirit, which does what? It releases the mighty power of God with mighty force. So this is an important part of how you get full of the power of God. You are to be, you're commanded to be inwardly empowered and able to manifest the mighty power of God with mighty force. And you are going to do that God's going to accomplish it, but you have a part to play by putting on the whole armor of God, which is the word in your heart, the word in your mind, the word directing your steps, the word in your mouth, in order to release the power of God when you pray the word that is going to bring forth a manifestation of the power of God that will deal with all the enemies. You'll be able to have the power of God against all the wiles of the devil, against all the evil spirits in the heavenlies, against anything that comes against you. You can quench every fiery dart that comes against you. You're going to be able to speak forth the word and destroy all the enemies by the power of God. God wants you to understand you are going to operate in the power of God. And God wants us to become full of the power of God. The power of God is in the word. Look what it says in Romans 1, 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God, the word dunamis. It's the power of God. And what will it do? It'll produce salvation, your deliverance, your healing, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the power of God is resident in the Word, and when you take hold of it and act upon it, it will produce healing, salvation, deliverance. It's for all those that are believing. We see another scripture over in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to unto us which are saved, or more literally, just so you understand what's being said, are being saved, it's a present tense verb, are being saved by the Lord. I'm not talking about someone that's already done, because salvation is an ongoing work and process that God is at working as we're working out our own salvation. Are being saved, it is the power of God. So, all the things that are preaching about the cross of what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us, it is to us who are being saved because we put it in operation in our life, the power of God. Because how does God do everything? He does everything by the power of God. Now, this power, you have to understand, is coming to you and me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, who that, that's you and me, earthen fleshly vessels, that the excellency of the power, dunamis, may be of God and not of us. It comes to dwell in you and it's operating through you, but it's not of you. Don't ever think for a minute when you do anything releasing the power of God that it's you. You are doing nothing. You, that's pride if you think for a minute that you're doing something. All you're doing is simply releasing God to accomplish what he says. The power is of God, not of us. So you've got to know the, the power of God will come into you 
as an earthen vessel. It'll come to dwell in you, even though you have sin like sinful flesh. At the same time, the power of God dwelling in you, it's of God, it's not of you. It's God dwelling in you that's going to manifest himself. We also see a scripture over in 2 Corinthians 12, in verse 9. Here's where Paul, or uh, what God said to Paul. He said, my grace, which is the favor of God that's going to bring forth God's victory in your life, is sufficient. The word sufficient means possessing of unfailing strength to defend and ward off. That's what the word means. My grace gives you unfailing strength to defend and ward off the enemy who was coming against him, attacking him, for you. For my strength, dunamis, they should have translated it power if they were consistent. Young does, does this correctly. For my power, God's power, is made perfect or comes to perfection and completion in weakness. What's the weakness? The weakness of the flesh. In the flesh, in human nature, we can do nothing. But the power of God comes to dwell in us. And so his power is made perfect in the midst of our weakness of flesh. He says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my weaknesses. It's the same word. See, there's the word weakness, number 769. Why they didn't translate it consistently, who knows. That's the problem to King James. It's been a lot of, caused a lot of confusion unless you look things up. It's the same number, 769, here, over here. So it's talking about, I rather glory in my weaknesses of flesh. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a problem. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, the power of Christ is going to rest upon you and me even in the midst of having flesh that is sinful and that has nothing in it that will manifest the power of God whatsoever. The power of Christ will manifest in us and rest upon us even though we are weak in the flesh and we are to get full of power even while we have this flesh that has not, of course, been changed. In Romans chapter 15, we see something else that's important. First of all, we'll look in verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Notice, the Scriptures produce hope. Hope is the word el peace, which means a confident expectancy, confident expectation of something. So we have a confident expectancy of the promises of God through the scriptures. So the word produces hope in us, and that's important. Remember, hope is of the soul, the word written in our mind. Faith is of the heart, where the word is written in our heart. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It brings the hopes into manifestation. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it calls God a God of hope. Now the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Notice, as you believe God's word that produces hope in you, God wants you to abound in hope, be abounding in this confident expectancy because of the word. And this is through the power of the Holy Ghost that's coming because the power of God is coming into you through the word. Hope produces the power of God in you. God wants you to have the power of God in you. You're to be filled with the power of God, as you see. You will see in a little bit. Galatians, chapter 3. Galatians, chapter 3, verse 5. He, therefore, that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles, the word miracles is the word dunamis, which is the word for power, who is working powerful works among you, doeth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? They couldn't do anything by the works of the law. It was all by the hearing of faith. Because you use your faith and you work your faith to release the power of God to come forth. In fact, that's a scripture that we'll look at, we're going to look at later, but we'll look at it right now real quick. 2 Thessalonians 1.11 says, 
that God wants to fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. When you work your faith by doing what the Word says, speaking the Word, acting upon it, it's going to put the power of God in operation. We don't work our faith and it does nothing. We're going to do it with the power. The power of God is going to go in operation when we work our faith with power to accomplish the things that God wants, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to bring victory, to overcome the enemies. That's what God wants. So you are going to work your faith to put the power of God in operation. And as you work it, your faith is going to get strong. Remember, your faith grows as you work it. So as your po the power is put in operation, the more you work your faith, the more the power of God will increase in you and develop in you in your life. And that is so important. In fact, in talking about the power of God increasing, This is talking about Saul, who later is called Paul. Got converted, of course, on the way, of, the way to Damascus. Wrote most of the New Testament. And God used him mightily to do great things in advancing the gospel. Acts 9.22, notice what it confesses, says about him. Paul, Saul, or Paul, increased, this is the word andunimo, the more in andunimo. He was still the more strength, he was increased strength, really, it's, it's all the same word. He was the more, or increased the more in dunamo, meaning that this was something that was increasing in his life continually. The reason you know this, again, I always look things up in the verbs. The imperfect verb is a past tense, but it means a continuous action that was going forth in the past. What it was literally is saying is, Saul was continually being empowered within, or increasing strength, they say, or increasing power within. He was continually being empowered within. He was growing and increasing in power. That's how he did things. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to grow and continually increase in power. In fact, in the prayers that are prayed for the church at Ephesus, We'll see it in chapter 1 and chapter 3, two different prayers that were prayed for the church there. In Ephesians chapter 1, in the first prayer, part of the prayer, and we go back here in verse 18, he talks about that they may know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what's the exceeding greatness of his power, dunamis, to usward or toward us, who are believing, who are believers, According to the working, this is the word energia, which means the active operation, or it's where we get our word energized. Something's energized when it's actively operating. The active operation of his mighty manifested power is what this is talking about. This is the word might, and this is the word kratos, a manifested power. So he wants us to know the exceeding greatness of the power of God that's to you and me who are believers. But how does that, how are you going to see that work? You've got to put it in operation. According to the working, you're going to see this greatness of the power according to the active operation of this mighty manifested power because how does that happen? We already saw. You put the armor of God on through the, through the word in you, which is the power of God resident within you, and then you pray with all manner of prayer to release it out with mighty force in order to accomplish all the things that God wants. So here he's praying this prayer. Remember, this is a prayer. We go back to where it starts. Verse 16, cease not to give thanks for you. Make and mention you in my prayers. This is a prayer you can pray for yourself or you can pray for others. It was prayed for the church here at Ephesus. That not only did they get a spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him, the eyes of their understanding be enlightened, but they would know this hope or confident expectancy, the calling, the riches of the glory of the inheritance, and the exceeding greatness of the power that's to you and me. If, of course, according to us putting it in active operation for the manifestation of His mighty, mighty power being manifested. So God wants you to know. You pray to know and to have this power resonant within you, and then you actively put it in operation in order to see the manifest power of God. So you're going to put it in operation. 
Well, I'm waiting for God to do something. No, he's waiting for you to do something to put him in operation, that puts the power of God in operation. Ephesians chapter 3. Here's the next prayer for the church at Ephesus. Verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might, this is the word kratao, which means a manifested power that produces strength, with might. Now, remember we've seen might was the word iskus at time, meaning mighty force. Well, here they didn't translate it well. It means power. It's the word dunamis. So you are going to be strengthened with power by his spirit. And where is this going to come? In the inner man. That's the inner man on the inside of you, the inward man and the hidden man of the heart. And what happens in your heart? The word comes into your heart, doesn't it? And the word in your heart, where the word is the power of God, and the power of God resident within you causes the power of God to be manifest. You are going to be spiritually strengthened with power in the inner man by his spirit. And that's why he's saying he's praying for this to happen for them. And that's what God wants. He wants you to understand that the power of God is to be in the inner man to make you strong. If you don't have the power of God in you, you won't be very spiritually strong to be able to stand successfully against the enemy and to see God accomplish what he purposes. And then we come down to, he continues to pray other things, we come down to verse 20. Now unto him that's able, or has the power, to do exceedingly abundantly, he, he can do it tremendously, above all that we ask, the word ask is the word iteo, for you who weren't here, haven't been here, it means a demand of something due when you look it up in the Greek. Because we make a demand of what's due us of the promises of God by praying the word and taking hold of the promises to see them come into manifestation. All that we make a demand of what's due us or even think according to, how is he able to do exceedingly abundantly? According to the power, dunamis, see below dunamis, that is actively put into operation in us. The worketh is this word, energio, operative, put into op active, operative, active operative action, essentially. And also, this is to be continually done, and it's also middle voice. Remember, we've talked about the middle voice. This is why it's so important. See, if you, don't look, if you don't know the Greek and you don't look up the Greek, you'll never have the slightest idea that this is saying any of this. You'll never get it. This is why it's important. According to the power that worketh in us, well, how does it get working in us? Because middle voice, the subject, you and I put it in operation to see it manifest yeah, for our benefit. Yeah. So, God will do exceed, has the power to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you make a demand of what's do your thing according to the power that is actively put into operation in us. And who does that? You and I do. As we speak the word, act on the word, do the word, do what he says to put the power of God into operation. And that's what he wants. So you and I are going to put the power of God in active operation for our benefit. We see another thing. Over in Philippians, chapter 3, verse 10. This is Paul saying that I may know him and the power, dunamis, of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection that overcame death, overcomes everything. You want to know the power of his resurrection will overcome anything, sickness, disease, any kind of bondage whatsoever. He said, I want to know the power of his resurrection. That resurrection power manifested. So you want to seek after that to know that and get revelation of it. And it's going to come through knowledge. This brings us to the next part in Colossians. How are you going to, another aspect of how you're going to get the power of God in you and become full of power. Colossians 1 verse 9, look what it says. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So we see knowledge, wisdom, 
understanding. We got to get those. Knowledge is a Greek word epigenosis, which means precise, correct knowledge. We got to get precise, correct, exact knowledge of what the word says, not what we think it says. We got to be sure we're right. Precise, correct knowledge of his will, which is the word of God, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. As you get knowledge and you act upon it, God will impart spiritual understanding to it. And as you continue to do it, you'll gain wisdom, which is knowing what to do in every situation because of applying the word in your life. So this, mean, this implies that you're going you're to get the word. You're going to get exact, precise, correct knowledge of the word. You're going to be put it in operation. You're going to get spiritual understanding. And you're going to apply it to the point where you're operating in wisdom. And what's that going to do? that you might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. The only way you can walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing is according to knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. We've got to get those things. Being fruitful in every good work. How do you get fruitful in every good work? By the Word working, right? Because you hear and you do the Word. You walk in the Word. You produce fruit as you hear the, the Word. It's the result of the Word that you're working. Increasing in the knowledge of God because you're going to continue to increase in knowledge as you act upon it and walk in it. Strengthened, that's the word dunamao, with all dunamis, empowered with, or, or having power with all power, or actually in the Greek. The Greek word order is a little bit different. It starts out with this word here, dunamis, and then it, this is the word after that, which is a, a, a present passive uh, participle. And so what it, Young's actually translates it correct from the Greek word order. In all, he didn't say get this part right, it's in all power, being made powerful, essentially is what it means. In all power, being made powerful. So how are you going to be made powerful? In all power, operating in you, which comes from the word of God. In all power, being made power, According to, and the word order again brings forth the power of his glory. And the word power here is this word kratos, which means a manifested power. Remember, that's the one you put in operation. Power gets resident within you, dunamis. When it's manifest out of you, it's kratos. It's going forth out of you with mighty force. So you are to be in all power being made powerful, and what happens when you're all, when you're powerful? Then, according to the manifested power of his glory. You're going to manifest that power as you act upon it, and what's going to happen? The glory of God, the presence of God is going to come into manifestation. God wants to manifest his presence, and the power of God brings the manifestation of the presence of God. When God's power was released, God's manifest power would show up and accomplish the great things that he wants. So, another aspect of getting full of power is you're going to get filled with the precise, correct knowledge of God. You're going to be a doer of it and gain spiritual understanding and wisdom. You're going to walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing because you do the word. You're going to be fruitful in all good works because of the word working in you and you do it, increasing in knowledge. The power is going to be resident within you and you're going to put the power into active operation so it is manifested. As you do so, it brings a manifestation of the power of God, which brings his glory on the scene, the glory of God. God wants the glory of God showing up, and it's him, but how does he operate? Through the word, and what's the word? The word is the power of God. So when the power of God, the word goes in operation, the manifest presence of God will come forth. Now, this power of God, it's been given unto us. Look what it says in 2 Peter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How? Through the knowledge, precise, correct knowledge of God. Remember, that was part of what we have to have to have power. And of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine dunamis power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So God's power given to us will produce everything we have need of for life and godliness. And how do we get it, though? 
through the knowledge, the precise, correct knowledge of Him that's called us to glory and virtue. So as you get the precise, correct knowledge of the Word in you, which is the power of God, it produces this divine power, it will give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. So the Word in you produces the power of God that will produce everything you have need of in life. Boy, we got to get the Word and the power of God in us, don't we? So we see everything happening in our life. That's what God wants. Now, another thing, Colossians. Is this just going to happen easily because you heard the word and with no problems whatsoever? No, you're going to have to deal with the devil because he's going to come. Remember, the devil comes to get the word out of your heart. We talked about that. Why does he want the word out of your heart? Because the word is going to produce the promises and it's the power of God which is going to manifest his power out of, out of the person to produce the salvation, the healing, the deliverance, the victory. So the devil's going to come after you when you hear the word because he doesn't want the power of God resident in you. So Colossians 1.29 tells us something. Whereunto I also labor, striving. The word striving is the word agonizomai, which means to contend with adversaries. It is the same word in the Greek that is translated fight in 1 Timothy 6.12 where it says fight the good fight of faith, if you're familiar with that. So it's talking about you fighting and contending with adversaries. You're going to have to do that. According to his active operation working, which is actively put into operation in me mightily in power, or as Young's brings it out, it's in with, with power. Because there's two words here. For some reason, they, didn't, they did it differently. Here, with, with dunamis. So, you are going to fight and contend with the adversary according to his working, his act of operation. That's God's act of operation. That's why it says his. Which is put into active operation in me because I'm the one put it in operation, middle voice again, you're doing it for your benefit, in power, the word dunamis. So you're going to, essentially it's saying you're going to put the operation of the power of God, you're going to put power of God in operation, which does what? That brings his working into play, his active operation, because you're engaging in the fight and the contending with the adversaries to conquer them. You are well able to conquer every enemy. You're going to fight the good fight of faith. You must use spiritual warfare means, and you must use power of the Word of God as you are put it in active operation. Remember, you're the one that puts us in active operation in power, which releases His working in order to overcome your enemies and see victory come forth in your life. That's what God wants. Now, when the gospel comes to you, 1 Thessalonians 1.5 tells us something else. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, not just in word or speech, this can refer to here, but also in power. It came in power. It's not just word. See, the, the, even the words you're hearing now, because we're giving the word, whether you realize it or not, the word is releasing power coming into you. And in the, whole, in the Holy Ghost, who's bringing revelation to you and, and writing this in your heart and mind. And much assurance, bringing you absolute certain confidence as God is revealing these things to you. And you're seeing the, 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 word, the Word of God, which is the power of God by the Holy Spirit. Revelation brings you much confidence of what God will accomplish for you. That means you've got to understand when the Word's coming forth, it's doing something. It's the power of God and the Holy Spirit is working. And it's going to bring you to the place of much certain confidence, full assurance. You know beyond a shadow of doubt what God's going to do because of the Word of God that He's bringing revelation and showing you what to do in order to accomplish this great and mighty work in you. Now, as we brought the Scripture before, we'll bring it up again. How am I putting this thing in operation? I am working the faith, work of faith, with power. I have to work it. It's through my faith. 
and it puts the power of God in operation. When you put your faith in operation, you speak the word or act upon the word, the power of God's going in operation, as long as you're doing what the word says, because the power is resident in the word. You speak the word, you act on the word, whatever it is, the power of God is going in operation. You see, you've got to understand, this is exactly what Jesus did. How did Jesus control everything that was going on? Look what it says here in Hebrews 1, 3. Who be in the brightness of his glory, speaking of Jesus, and the express image of his person, and notice the next part, upholding all things by the rhema word of his dunamis. Word, rhema, means that which is spoken, something that's spoken, a thing spoken. So this is talking about the spoken word of his dunamis. So how does his dunamis, his power, get in operation? You speaking the word. Because the power of God's resident in the word. And as you speak the word, you put the power of God in operation. And so what was Jesus doing? He was upholding all things by the spoken word of his power. When he spoke the word, he controlled everything that was going on. Because the word has the power of God. He can quench every fiery dart of the wicked. He could smite every devil. It would resist everything that the enemy would bring forth. It would put the angels in operation that hearken to the voice of the word. They go forth and they accomplish the things. In fact, look at what the angels do. You've got to understand the angels also function when you put the power of God in operation because themselves are mighty in power. Psalms 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, he is angels. Talking about angels. That excel. The word excel is not a good translation. It's the word gabor in the Hebrew, which means strong and mighty. They are strong and mighty in koak. We've seen this word before, which is the word for manifested power. And essentially, as Young brings it out, they're mighty in power. The angels are mighty in power. And they do His commandments hearkening to the voice of the Word. Amen. So the Word has the power of God in it. And when you speak it, you're putting the power of God in operation. The angels are coming on the scene who are mighty in power to perform it. Yeah. The power of God is going to accomplish everything in your life, whether you realize it or not. And that is so important. Hebrews chapter 11. We talked earlier about the fact that you've got to take hold of power to see it come in manifestation. Look what it says here in Hebrews 11.11. 11. This is talking about in the faith chapter. Through faith also Sarah, talking about Abraham and Sarah. Remember, it wasn't just Abraham's faith that produced everything. Sarah had to get involved and do something too. Sarah herself received lombano, took hold of. Strength, what's the word strength? Dunamis, the word for power. She had to take hold of power to conceive seed. How did she do it? Through faith. What was her basis? The Word. Through acting on the Word and taking hold of the promise, you take hold of power. Believing you take hold of the power of God when you take hold of the promise. Because the power of God is resident in it. She took hold of the power of God to bring that forth, to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who'd promised. It was all based on the promise. And God did it. So another thing, if you're going to see the power of God come forth in your life, you're going to have to take hold of the power of God through your faith to bring things into manifestation. Now this brings us to another point for just a few couples before we close. For we got a few minutes to cover this. We talked about many things. We'll summarize these in a minute. But what about what could hinder you from having the power of God in operation? I got a spirit of power in me. I got Christ, the power of God. I got the Holy Spirit. I got the anointing of the Holy Spirit and power. Power, you know, I got the, I hear the word and all these things. That's great. But could there be something else that can stop you, even though you have all these things, from seeing the power of God work? Yes. Look what it says. 
Lamentations 1.6. It says, From the daughter of Zion all her beauties departed. Her princes have become like hearts that find no pasture. And they're gone without coac, manifested power, before the pursuer. Who's the pursuer? The enemy attack after you. Why is the enemy able to attack? Because of their sin. They'd gone into captivity because of the multitude of their transgressions. It says, the Lord afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions, all of her sins. They had gone into captivity before the enemy. <laughs> and they're gone without any manifest power before the pursuer, who is the enemy, pursuing them and bringing them into captivity and destroying them in their life. So, this means if you have sin, that'll stop the power of God from operating in your life. You may have heard the word a whole lot, but if you don't deal with that sin, your power is going to be shut down. In fact, the devils are already come in to take you captive, and they will take you captive, and they will continue to pursue you. And because you don't have the power to stop them because of sin being the open door. Right. See, sin just shuts down the power of God operating in you and opens the door for the enemy to work. And remember, the enemy has power. Remember Luke 10, 19, where it says, we'll come back to that for a moment, you got to understand, in the realm of the Spirit, it's authority and power against power. Luke 10, 19, I give unto you authority. This word power here is not dunamis, it's the word exousia, which means authority. Young's corrects the error. To tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power. This is the word dunamis, the same word for power, about the power of God. The enemy's got power too. So don't think the enemy can't do things. You open the door through sin, he's going to nail you to the wall. You break the hedge, you're going to be destroyed. He's going to come in, the serpent's going to come in and bite you. Right. He's going to pursue you and bring destruction against you. That's why the power of God will not manifest in you if you have sin. You have to deal with sin. It's manifest. That you have, it's ma mandatory in your life. Another thing. Well, I've confessed my sin. I believe, receive forgiveness, cleansing from all unrighteous. I repent and turn from it. And I'm still not seeing power operating like I want to see it. Like the Word shows that it's supposed to operate. Here's another important scripture. Hosea 7, verse 9. Look what it says. Strangers have devoured his coac. Strangers have devoured or eaten up your manifest power. They're blocking your manifest power. Well, who are the strangers? Who are strangers? Demons. Demons that have come into you are strangers. They're not supposed to listen to any stra stranger. Who's the stranger? The voice of the stranger is the devil. You're not supposed to listen to the devil. Strangers are demons that have come into you. So what does that tell you? In the measure that you've cast out the demons, will be the measure that you've gotten rid of demons that could hinder the manifest power of God operating in you. Meaning, if you haven't gone through too much deliverance, they're going to be hindering you. They're going to be eating up your power, manifesting. God wants you to get the demons out of you and be working. The more you cast out the demons, the less you're going to have of spirits that are going to be able to hinder you. That's why going through ongoing deliverance is so important. Don't be one of those, oh, it's going to get delivered of my problem because I have a pain or this problem or this sickness or that or whatever. No, you want to get delivered of everything. You want to cast out anything and everything that's in you from inheritance, your own sins, and victimization, and clean house on everything. Not only to get rid of it for the power of God, but also to be holy. What's the purpose of deliverance? To get us holy. Get us totally free of all the works of the enemy. Not just possess a promise, get free of a pain, or, you know, see some blessing come or whatever. No. Oh. Strangers have devoured. We've got to get rid of all of the enemies and drive them out. Another thing, if you don't conquer temptations, it'll stop the power of God from manifesting in you. I want you to notice this. Luke chapter 4 is where Jesus was out there. Uh, in verse 1, first of all, we'll go back to. And this is one, he was full of the Holy Ghost. He returned from Jordan. He's led in the Spirit in the wilderness. And now he's being tempted of the devil for 40 days. Did, Je Jesus, did Jesus get beat up by the devil during the 40 days? No. He beat up the devil every place. 
Did he get worn down and just barely make it out of there? No. Verse 14 tells you how he came out of there. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> power was functioning. Otherwise, he was operating in power and he continued to have power, which means that he obviously overcame all the temptations of the enemy, which we know he did, which also implies this. If you don't overcome the temptations of the enemy, you're not going to have power manifest. You've got to overcome the temptation of the enemy. If you yield to him, it will stop and sap the power of God from operating in your life. God wants you to understand that. Proverbs. Another thing, in the midst of the battle that you're fighting, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength, coax, manifested power, is small. You may want to believe I'm a mighty man or woman of power and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Don't ever start exalting yourself. If you faint in the day of adversity when the enemy attacks, your power is small. If your power is strong, you'd wipe them out. You would never faint. You would never draw back. You would never, you know, get beaten by the enemy. You know, men are always to pray and not to faint. People that faint shut down their faith, kind of back off, give in to the enemy, get overcome. That means your manifest power is small because remember, it's power and authority against power. You've got to know you have authority. You've got to put it in operation. You've got to know you have power and you've got to get full of power. The more the power of God resident in you, it can operate against you. Against the, it can help you to conquer, of course, the enemy. And so the devil has power. So this is why people that operate in authority, but with the power of God, wasn't operating in a level that needed to be, and so therefore they weren't functioning the way they should, and they didn't get the victory. Well, here's another thing that's important. In Matthew chapter 17, here's where the, this is the one you couldn't, the disciples couldn't cast the demon out of the guy, remember? Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not Dunamai, why didn't we have the power to cast them out? What happened? These guys had cast out before. What happened on these guys? He said, Because of your unbelief. If you have unbelief, that'll shut down the power of God as well. That's why. We just got done that series on belief. It's so important. You need to be a real believing believer and develop yourself in such strong belief and strong faith that you are never going to back off and you're always going to be able to see every enemy defeated. They didn't have the power because of their unbelief. You've got to get rid of unbelief. You've got to get rid of all these things. Also, you must always know that the power of God will always work. Don't ever deny the power of God. Now, some people deny the power of God because they try other ways. Look what it says here. 2 Timothy 3.5 talks about those that have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. They're denying it in some aspect, whether not accepting it, rejecting it, refusing it, the power thereof, dunamis. Otherwise, you should always be living by the power and operating by the power. If you don't, you're essentially denying the power in some aspect. In fact, those who don't even believe in the power of God, it even says form, turn away. These are form of, people that have a form of godliness. They look like they're Christians, mm -hmm. but they're not operating according to the power of God. God wants you to understand the power of God is what you are to live by. And he wants you to put the power of God in operation. Remember, Saul increased in power greatly. He continued to increase in power. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to become tremendously powerful. One last scripture. We've got a lot to talk about, which we're going to go through tonight. We'll go back over a lot of these things. We covered a lot of things that need to be gone back over a little bit to get them in you. 33, that is. 
This is what the apostles did. With great power, the apostles gave, they gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Great power. And they did mighty works. People were getting saved, people were getting healed, people were getting delivered. Great grace was upon them because of the power of God. Chapter 5 shows it forth. Verse 12, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. <laughs> the power of God was in operation. Verse 14, believers were more added to the Lord. Multitudes, insomuch they brought forth the sick into the streets, laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And there came a multitude out of the cities round about in Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirit, and they were healed every one. This isn't Jesus. This is the early church did all this because they got full of the power of God. Remember the glory of the, of that's going to be on the latter house, the end time church, will be greater than the former because there will be a remnant. There will be the mighty army of the Lord that will rise up the body of Christ and will become mighty and powerful and go forth and accomplish the great works of the Lord before the end comes, because the greater glory is going to happen. And this, this is what's going to happen to those who get full of power. God wants you to be a part of the end time church that gets full of power and does the mighty works of the Lord and sees God do tremendous things. You have authority and you have the means to have, you got a spirit of power, but you have the means to get the power of God. But there's a lot of things that have to be done, as we've seen. As we summarize, in order to see the power of God, you do have to have be holy, no uncleanness, devoted, consecrated, separated to God like a, a na spiritual Nazarite, which is what Christians are. Get the knowledge of God. Know you're a king, and when you speak the word, you're putting power in operation because the power is resident in the word. You have absolute confidence and ex expectation and trust in the Lord for the power of God to manifest. You're going to fortify yourself mightily, securing power for yourself, which is by putting on the whole armor of God. You're going to hear the word. You've got to hear the teaching first. You've got to know the scriptures exactly, not what I think it says, and know the power of God. You've got to know that God's given you authority and power over the devils. You're going to use your authority, but also you're going to have power that's going to be released. You are to clothe yourselves with the power of God from on high, taking hold of the power of God into you through putting on the armor of God so you're inwardly empowered within and then manifesting it out as you put it in operation, as you work your faith. Also, the power is, re is resident in you, an earthen vessel, but it's not of you. It's God doing everything. Don't for a minute think it's you. The power will rest on you even though you have weakness in the flesh. So don't think that just because I'm weak in the flesh that I cannot have the power of God resting on me. You must abound in hope, confident expectancy of the word, so that you are bounding in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Confident expectancy, filled with, your, filled with joy and peace in believing. You're going to work your faith to release the power of God. You pray to know the greatness of the power of God as you believe, and you actively put it in operation. We saw many scriptures on that. As you put it in active operation and work your faith, it's going to get stronger, it's going to develop, and you're going to become full of power. You must keep the word in you and conquer temptations also because the devil will try to take it out. You're to know the power of God through the word. Remember, it's through the precise, correct knowledge of the word, with understanding and wisdom because you're doing the word and you put it in active operation to see yourself come to the place of being with, you're going to, in power, you're going to be powerful essentially is what that scripture was saying in Colossians. If the power of God's given to us for all things comes through the knowledge of God. You've got to get it. You've got to contend with the adversary which activates the power of God to flow out of you because the enemy will come for the word, so you've got to conquer him in your life. The power of God is going to be put in operation as you speak, just like Jesus. He spoke forth the spoken word of his power. That's what released the power, and that's how he is controlling everything. Sarah also took hold of the power of God to bring the manifestation of the promise. You're going to take hold of the power of God by taking hold of the promise and the power is resident in that word of the promise to see it come into manifestation. 
You also must not have sin. You also need to be casting out the demons that will be hindering you. You need to conquer all temptation and never be fainting. Because if you are fainting, that tells you. That's a barometer saying, well, I'm, I, I'm, my manifest power must be weak here, must be small. I got to get it going. We need to get the power of God in operation and God wants us to increase mightily in the power of God. As you have the power of God resident in you and you put it in operation, these guys operated with great power. Great power. We're, God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is going to have an end time church that is going to be mighty and full of power. Just as these guys were full of power, full of the Holy Ghost, full of faith and full of wisdom, in the early church, the end time church is going to have the greater glory, is also going to have a remnant who are going to be full of power, full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, and full of wisdom to go forth and accomplish the great things of God and to see him bring forth what he purposes. God wants every one of us to become full of power. You have a spirit of power. You need to do what the Word says to get full of power. You got to conquer the devil and conquer sin. Get rid of all these demons out of you. They're going to be hindering you. You want to overcome every temptation. Get yourself walking in line with the word and speaking the word and doing the word. And you will see the power of God will begin to work. Saul increased in power. That's supposed to happen in you and me. He wants you increasing day after day after day in the power of God. And that's what he will accomplish. And then he, he will raise you up to be mighty mighty power to do the mighty works of the Lord. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation of how to become full of the power of God. I thank you that I will take heed to the Word of God and I will do what it says to see the power of God develop in my life, increase so that I become full of power and I release it out as I work my faith to see the power of God accomplish everything, bring into manifestation all things that I have need of and conquer every enemy. I thank you. You've given me authority. You've also given me a spirit of power. Now I need to develop that power and get full of power because authority and power will conquer all enemies, all sickness and disease, even raise the dead. I thank you. I am going to get full of power and I will operate in authority and power and conquer every enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. This is important. A lot of people think it's just authority, but they fail to realize about power. Because other scriptures say authority and power together. And Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power. The power of God is necessary. These guys had great power, mighty power. And you'll see more when we talk about, we got a lot to talk about tonight. We'll go back over some of these important things. And tonight we'll be talking about how this power will manifest greatly and see God accomplish the things that he's going to do. And this is what he's going to do in the body of Christ for those who will do what's necessary you're going to have to pay the price of the Word of God to do it. You know, you, you walk around in sin, you walk around in the flesh, you got the things of the world, it'll never happen. You're like a Nazarite, see? Devoted, consecrated, separated, no uncleanness. I don't want any of this stuff. None of this stuff. Nothing that's going to contaminate me. That's a prerequisite to have the power of God. You walk in the ways of the Lord, and God is going to do a great, and mighty work. Father, thank you for all you brought forth. We'll be hearers and doers of this word, and we will become full of the power of God and see you accomplish everything that you purpose. Thank you for the power of God manifest in the end time church in these last days in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Tonight, we will continue on this and finish on.